Well, what am I going to talk about? Um, let me set the expectation. When I heard about this um, IoT uh, conference, and I'm very impressed with the, I've been sitting all through the day, uh, I thought, why not talk about Accenture's technology vision? Uh, this is an annual exercise we do. It is something that people, the industry really likes to see because we do set, in a lot of sense, the uh, trends that are disrupting business. And uh, I thought, in hindsight, that, you know what? This year's tech vision, if there's one trend I see really impacting everything, it's IoT. Very relevant. And given that I have an evening slot, I also thought that um, maybe it will help summarize what we hear all through the day. Uh, because there have been a lot of good speakers all through the day, and uh, we have been hearing a lot of things. Um, for few of you who uh, probably do not know about Accenture, we are one of the uh, global management consulting technology services uh, outsourcing organization. We are a $31 billion organization. We operate out of 120 countries. Uh, India is our biggest geography. Bangalore is our biggest city anywhere in the world. Uh, we work across five industries, financial services, communication, high tech, products, uh, resources and health public service. Each of them approximately six billion dollar in size. Uh, India has one lakh fifty eight thousand employees and we serve 500 customers out of India, um, out of 29 facilities. So that's briefly about Accenture and what is the tech vision? Tech vision is an exercise we do annually. It's a forward-looking vision. It talks about what are the major trends that's going to disrupt the businesses. And uh, though it's almost three years, five years kind of vision, we upgrade it every year. And the way we do it is, uh, A, we interview, uh, like this year, we interviewed 2,000 CXOs of the Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we did, uh, we also talked to academia. We talked to startups, to venture capitalists. We, we, we take information from our own org uh, employees in our organization. And uh, we set up an advisory board with techno technology luminaries, uh, which is as big as two dozen people. And at the end of it, we look at all the recommendations, and we look at recommendations that look actionable, recommendations that are not very niche, but that are very broad-based. And uh, we then kind of create the story saying, this is what the industry is looking like. This is how the industry is moving. This is how technology is shaping industries. So um, 2013, you know, when people were looking at uh, maybe uh, the Googles and the Facebooks of the world and calling them the digital companies, Accenture made the very bold statement that every business is a digital business. And it resonated very well with our customers. We said, irrespective of what kind of business you are in, if you have to thrive, if you have to survive and thrive, you have to be a digital business. And that's what our 2013 um, uh, statement was. Interestingly, if you know, if you look at the Fortune 500 organizations since 2000, year 2000, 52% of them no longer exist, and that shows the amount of mortality in business today. 2014 vision, we made the overarching statement that uh, contrary to the views that large uh, brick and mortar organizations will perish because of the onslaught of digital, uh, we rather said that big is the next big thing, and what we really meant was large organizations, because of their deep pockets, deep resources, great ecosystem, great customer base, they're actually going to be the digital disruptors uh, rather than getting digitally disrupted, right? And this year, what we are really saying is that uh, it's great if you're large, but you cannot do it alone. If you have to be successful, you have to team up, create your own ecosystem, sometimes across industry boundaries, to create some broader perspective, greater outcome for your customers, and I guess, this is what we are calling as the V economy. You know, it's not about me, it's about V. How do we come together and create greater outcomes? And um, clearly, to do V, there's a big role of IoT in that. Let's uh, try to uh, break up this trend into some of the um, trends, right? And then I'll quickly go through each of these trends. Why do we think V economy, succeeding in the V economy is very important right now? Um, the first trend is Internet of Me. And if I refer to the uh, conversation earlier in the day when uh, Mr. Kiloskar was uh, responding to a question, he clearly said that today, giving his own examples of automobiles, he said every customer wants his own personalized car. 
And uh, you know, a Gartner survey revealed that 89% of the executives they surveyed, they failed that as, recent, as early as 2016, experience is going to be the only primary competitive differentiator, nothing else. And, and personalized experience is even more important. And that's where digital and sensors come to play because they help you create the personalized experience. In fact, this is a work we did with uh, the smartwatch with Adidas for porting the My Coach platform you know, in the smartwatch, which has sensors that you know, kind of acts as your personal trainer. Outcome economy is all about how hardware and you know, sensors and uh, the uh, improvement in telecom technologies is helping you to create greater outcome for your customers. And um, if you look at uh, what, for example, uh, Climate Corp, one of the Monsanto subsidiaries is doing, they are using sensors to capture the information of soil from the ground. They're marrying it with weather data. They're creating interesting insight. And they're selling this data as services to customers uh, so that the farmers can have better yield. And there are similar examples uh, all over the place. So that's, that's the power of outcome economy. The third um, um, trend is called the platform revolution. Today, in fact, a lot of sessions I've, I've attended, I sat through the day, I saw people giving examples of platform. And the IDC survey reveals that as early as 2016, you're going to have 100 industry platform. Most of these industry platforms are going to be built by industry leading businesses. And one example today I saw was what Siemens uh, showed us, the Synalytics platform. Uh, that's a very good example for it. Uh, and then there were other kind of platforms that IBM was talking about, I I IoT of automobiles, IoT of electronics. Uh, so, and uh, there are, the, the example that I wanted to talk about is a recent uh, uh, demo we did in the mobile World Congress, where uh, we created a connected car platform with Pizza Hut um, and with Visa. And what this allows you to do is while you're driving home or anytime, you know, you can order your pizza from your car. And by the time your car reaches the Pizza Hut, the beacons identify your car and your, the hot pizzas are just delivered to you and you don't lose time uh, you know, taking your pizza while. So you, know, you can have all these kind of interesting things. But in general, the platform revolution is a very powerful story. A uh, lot of people across industries are creating platforms. John Deere Operation Center is a wonderful platform. They connect with, again, Climate Corp. So there are examples in all industry, and this is a very important trend. It also points to the fact that you cannot do it alone. You have to be creative. You use technologies, IoT sensors, and other digital technologies, and you create platforms, digital platforms, and you create greater outcomes. Um, intelligent enterprise, we all know that data is a new oil. And all what intelligent organizations are doing is they are capturing data from an IoT perspective. Again, IoT sensors give you hell amount of data. You need to know which are the you know, smart data you need to store, you need to analyze. Um, uh, this is an example of the work we are doing with Caterpillar. So Caterpillar, we take the data uh, into the Accenture connected vehicles platform. And once you get those huge amount of data, you can do big analytics on top of it. You can connect up with um, other third-party enterprises, with insurers, and so on and so forth. Um, in an intelligent enterprise, I also want to call out some of the researches we are doing. It's not just about analytics, but beyond analytics, machine learning, deep learning. How do you do you know, intelligence from the data, right? Uh, so uh, apart from the traditional analytics. So that, that's about the intelligent enterprise. The final one uh, is what we call workforce reimagined. And uh, this is more uh, an example of the work we did with uh, Philips and Emotive. And it's about you know, how do you control light and temperatures with your brainwave. But apart from that, I can uh, see the impact, uh, the workforce uh, reimagined, which basically means not just your employees within the four walls, but the advent of machines, the advent of software robotics, hardware robotics, uh, virtual agents, and uh, many of you who have exposure to business process, outsourcing kind of organizations, you know so many of those traditional roles are now done by robots, right? By software robots, blue prisms, uh, and, and the likes of it. And a lot of work which was earlier done manually is now done with machines. And that opens up a lot of questions, like, you know, when we ask men to train, train machines, who are eventually going to take away their jobs, for example, uh, you will have cultural challenges. 
uh, or you know, what do you do when some things fail? You know, where, who do you go and catch? How do you audit it? So um, that, that's about the workforce. And, and there's another interesting component that leads me to the open innovation. And that is today, interest, uh, intelligent organizations, they are leveraging startups outside the four walls to bring innovation, to speed up innovation. And uh, when we say open innovation, the way we address it in Accenture is this is a global program. In every geo, we go and identify startups which are of interest to us. We put them in our pipeline, and we see how they can be uh, married to our offerings, and we take the startups with us to the, to the uh, customers. So we call this the bridge maker uh, model, uh, because what we have observed is startups, there are very good startups all over the world today. There's no lack of funding, so we don't want to be another venture capitalist. We do make minority investments in startups, but if you look at Accenture as a VC, we are probably the least known VC on the planet. But we do uh, take interest in startups, do minority investments. But more importantly, the value we have with startups is we evaluate, curate startup, we take those startups with us to the customers we serve. And that's a hell number of customers all over the world. Um, these are some of the uh, things that's happening globally. Uh, from an India perspective, uh, my technology lab has also the role of evaluating startups and using it in the technology work we do, which is approximately 15 billion of Accenture's uh, revenues. And um, uh, we are uh, working with startups all over the world, and therefore we are very interested also to see all the interesting startups in India and how we can engage with them and take them along. Uh, we work closely with uh, various organizations in India. Uh, we have a very good uh, defined uh, pipeline model where we evaluate them and the ones of interest, we build offerings with them, and finally we uh, scale them up and take, we take them along uh, to our customers. Um, so that is what uh, I had. I really had to run. I, I know that uh, we're already late. Um, uh, so if, I don't know whether I have time for questions, but if you have any questions, catch me. I'm still around. Um, thank you.